Now let us discuss chronic gout and its treatment. Chronic gout is characterized by the presence of hyperuricemia and um, inflammation is not uh, uh, an important factor in its pathogenesis. That's the reason NSAIDs are not used in this mainly and it is characterized by tophi which are chalk like lesions present below the skin of pinna, eyelids as well as below the skin of nose. The problem with chronic gout is that it can uh, precipitate into an attack of acute gout which causes permanent destruction of joints. So the main aim of treatment for chronic gout is to prevent its progression to uh, attacks of acute gout and so as to prevent the joint destruction. And it can be achieved by decreasing uric acid levels in the blood as well as by increasing the excretion of uric acid. Since it's not mainly associated with inflammation, therefore NSAIDs are not used in this uh, condition. However, the NSAIDs can be used if there is an acute attack or if there is risk of an acute attack of gout, for example, by the use of drug allopurinol. Because drugs for chronic gout. For acute gout, we already know NSAIDs, corticosteroids and colchicine are used. For chronic gout, we can use two classes of drugs. These are synthesis inhibitors which will inhibit the synthesis of uric acid and uricose uric agents which will increase the excretion of uric acid. Now synthesis inhibitors include drugs. We have another class called as uricase analogs which will be discussed later on. Synthesis inhibitors include drugs such as allopurinol and febuzostat and uricose uric agents include drugs such as probin acid and sulfenpyrazole. Now synthesis inhibitors these uh, these will decrease the synthesis of uric acid and uricose uric agents will increase the excretion of uric acid and thus both are useful in treatment of chronic gout. Now let us discuss synthesis inhibitors. So the first synthesis inhibitor is allopurinol. Now allopurinol is a drug of choice for the treatment of chronic gout. It is a hypoxanthine analog and it competitively inhibits the enzyme xanthine oxidase. So it is similar in structure to hypoxanthine and, is, comp and uh, is responsible for competitively inhibiting this enzyme. Normally hypoxanthine is converted into xanthine by the enzyme xanthine oxidase. So by the use of allopurinol, this conversion will be decreased. Further, allopurinol itself will be acted upon by xanthine oxidase and will be converted into allozanthine. Now, allopurinol, uh, it is a short-acting drug and is less potent, whereas allozanthine is long-acting and more potent inhibitor. So this type of inhibition in which the original inhibitor is acted upon by enzyme and converted into a more potent inhibitor is called a suicidal inhibition. Uses of allopurinol. Allopurinol is a drug of choice for the treatment of chronic gout. It can also be used for other conditions which are associated with hyperuricemia such as tumor lysis syndrome. In tumor lysis syndrome, there is excessive lysis of tumor cells which results in increased metabolism of nucleic acids and increased uric acid production. It can also be used in conditions such as leach nyhan syndrome in which there is inhibition of salvage pathway of purine metabolism by due to congenital defect in HGPRT enzyme. It can also be used to potentiate the effect of 6-mercaptopurine and azathioprine. Azathioprine is an immunosuppressant and 6-mercaptopurine is an anti-cancer drug. Side effects of allopurinol. The most common side effect is hypersensitivity reactions. And another important which is a paradoxical side effect of allopurinol is that it uh, causes increased attacks of acute gout in first two weeks. So a drug which is used for treatment of chronic gout causes increased attacks of acute gout. How does this happen? This is because once allopurinol comes into action, it decreases the uric acid levels in blood and as a result, the body responds to this change and it mobilizes uric acid from tissues to the blood. So there are increased levels of uric acid in the blood which precipitates attacks of acute gout. That is the reason for first, almost first two weeks, allopurinol should not be used alone. It's always to be used with uh, drugs such as colchicine or NSAIDs in this case. Now, another important side effect is uh, it also inhibits enzyme oro to dilate decarboxylase which results in oro to dilate acid urea. Uh, a fourth side effect of allopurinol is that it can cause Steven Johnson syndrome. However, the side effect is very rare. Now, uh, in case of resistance to allopurinol, we use another drug called as oxypurinol, which becomes a drug of choice. Now, this is an example of an orphan drug. Uh, orphan drug is a drug which is used for very rare conditions, since this resistance to allopurinol is a rare condition, or rather hypersensitivity to allopurinol. 
Now let us discuss another drug that is called as Febuzostat. Now Febuzostat it is used for the treatment of only chronic gout, not for other uh, conditions associated with hyperuricemia. It is a synthetic drug that is it's a non-purine xanthine oxidase inhibitor. Febuzostat can result in certain side effects such as nausea, diarrhea, headaches. Uh, it can also cause liver damage and because it inhibits metabolism of xanthine, it causes increased excretion of xanthine which can cause xanthine stones. Uh, Febuzostat has the potential to interact with certain drugs such as 6 mercaptopurine azathioprine and drugs such as theophysine. Now let us discuss another class of drugs called as uricosuric drugs. The main drug in this class is probin acid. Now probin acid chemically it's an organic acid and uh, it was developed to increase the action of penicillin by decreasing its secretion in the renal tubule. The mechanism of action of probin acid is that it inhibits a family of active transporters called as organic acid transporter proteins. These are responsible for active transport that is secretion and reabsorption of various substances. Now in case of penicillin this this family of proteins is responsible for active secretion of penicillin in the renal tubule. So uh, probin acid will inhibit this protein and will decrease the secretion and secretion is more prominent as compared to reabsorption so net result will be decreased excretion of penicillin which will increase its duration of action. In case of uric acid, uh, a, a member of this family called as URAT1 is responsible for active reabsorption of uric acid in the renal tubule. And this uh, reabsorption is more prominent as compared to secretion. So probin acid inhibits reabsorption and thus increases the excretion of uric acid. And thus it can be used in chronic gout. Drug interactions of probin acid. Uh, along with penicillin, probin acid also uh, inhibits the um, secretion of drugs such as phellosporin, sulfonamides, and endomethacin and decreases their excretion, so it increases their duration of action. It also decreases the excretion of rifampicin and bile and can prolong its action. Pyrazinamide and ethambutol they can interfere with uricosuric action of probin acid, so they should not be used together. Another drug called as nitrofurantoin, it's excreted in urine and it has an antimicrobial action when it achieves a particular concentration in urine. So probin acid inhibits excretion of this drug in urine, so this particular concentration cannot be achieved and it does not produce antimicrobial action when used with probin acid. Aspirin itself interferes or decreases the uricosuric action of probin acid. Probin acid is mainly used in uh, chronic gout uh, when xanthine oxidase inhibitors are either ineffective or whenever there is intolerance to these drugs. They can also be used in chronic gout when the cause of chronic gout is decreased excretion of uric acid and not increased production. And they are indicated when TOFI are present in case of hyperuricemia. These drugs are, uh, they are contraindicated in case of renal insufficiency or renal failure as these are excreted by kidney and also when the cause of hyperuricemia is increased production of uric acid because they will not treat the primary cause. For example, in case of leash nyhan syndrome, the cause is a congenital defect on HGPRT, so this drug cannot be used. The side effects of probin acid include a deposition of urate stones uh, in the uh, urinary tract because of increased uric acid excretion so adequate hydration is advised in these patients another drug from this class is sulfenpyrazole it's a pyrazole derivative and uh, it also increases the excretion of uric acid by inhibiting its reabsorption in the renal tubule however it produces side effects such as gi irritation and it also inhibits platelet aggregation because of which it's not used nowadays a recently developed class of drugs are the uric acid analogs. In birds, uric acid is not excreted as such. It is converted into a water-soluble substance called as allantoin which is then excreted in urine. This conversion is possible because of enzyme uric acid which is absent in humans. So by using recombinant DNA technology, this enzyme uric acid has been incorporated in certain drugs such as raspuricase and paglutecase. So it produces uric acid action and metabolizes uric acid. Raspberrycase is FDA approved for the treatment of tumor lysis syndrome, however it's not the drug of choice. Pegluticase, uh, since it is an enzyme, the route of administration is parental, it's preferred by IV route and it is used in drug resistant cases of chronic gout. However, it produces uh, side effects uh, since it is an enzyme, it acts as an exogenous peptide and activates immune system and can produce hypersensitivity reactions resulting in anaphylaxis and uh, even hemolysis.